Hello everyone and welcome to Monday Morning Motivation. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. This is the next beatitude I'll be looking at. As Jesus spoke on the mountain, he wasn't just speaking to the crowd of people gathered around, but he was more specifically speaking to those who were his followers. Therefore, each one of these kingdom blessings can only be laid hold of by those who follow Jesus. It means that when Jesus said those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, he was addressing all those who actively seek and pursue not their own righteousness, as so many do today, but rather those who pursue right standing with God. This particular blessing is like the what I call the pivotal marker in the list of all the blessings, all the Beatitudes. This links all that went prior with those that are to come. We cannot recognize our poverty in spirit if we are not hungry and thirsty for something more. We can't mourn over sin and injustice if we are not desperate for something better. And meekness will certainly not be produced in us if we do not recognize the need for a higher standard of righteousness than our own. You see, being hungry and thirsty for righteousness isn't just about being the most morally upright person or having high standards of ethical behavior and integrity. This righteousness that Jesus is referring to has nothing to do with human standards or definitions and it cannot be produced naturally out of man's own heart. The prophet makes this very, very clear in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 using graphic imagery to drive home his point. Speaking to all of Israel, he declares, but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. By his use of the words unclean thing and filthy rags, the prophet was saying that the nation had become unclean like something so filthy that all you can do is immediately dispose of it. All their self-righteous deeds were, were like this in God's sight. Our own acts of good deeds, as great and wonderful and charitable as they may seem, will never meet God's standards of righteousness. That is why Jesus warned his disciples, and by extension us, that unless their righteousness exceeded the righteousness of the religious scribes and Pharisees, they would never enter into the kingdom of heaven. We can only come into right standing with God and receive his righteousness when we believe in Jesus and accept him as our savior. And out of his righteousness imparted in us, we can think, act, and live right. His righteousness in us produces good thoughts, leading to good deeds, causing men to take note and glorify our Father in heaven. If you recognize that despite your very best efforts, there are still areas in your inner being that are not in order, but you are hungry and thirsty for more, Jesus has promised that you shall be filled, you shall be satisfied. Sometimes we sit and eat a, a meal that we really enjoy or we drink a tasty drink that really hits the spot. We, we may be left wanting more, but sadly it's all gone. But not so with God's righteousness. Whoever is hungry and thirsty for God's righteousness shall be completely filled. We may become thirsty and hungry for more, not because we weren't satisfied, but because his presence, his goodness, his righteousness is so wonderful, so precious, that we just can't get enough, so we keep returning for more. It is not that we lack, but like a plant needs sunlight and water, we just want more of God, that's it. On the other hand, many people pursue what this world offers, hankering after more and more, never satisfied, 
always seeking to win the approval of men and be known for their good deeds, their morally upright character. They may have the best that money can buy or be well known for their good deeds, but, there's all, but there always remains a void. In this cancel culture, one misstep, one misdeed, one word spoken out of turn and all the good things they may have done, no matter how expansive, instantly goes up in smoke, vanish, vanishing with the wind. But not so with the righteousness that God gives, not so with the good deeds believers do, which are birthed out of God's righteousness. Proverbs 21 and verse 21 states, he who pursues righteousness and loving devotion finds life, righteousness, and honor. And in Psalm 63, where David expresses longing and thirsting for God, he declares that his soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. Then in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, halfway through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Making God's kingdom and his righteousness top priority brings you into a place where your daily basic needs are met, where you don't have to worry about clothes and food. That's how essential it is to hunger and thirst for God's righteousness. So, when you are hungry and thirsty for God's righteousness, you will be filled. That's a promise. You will receive his righteousness and you will be fully satisfied. And when you come back for more, there'll be a lot to be given. When you are truly satisfied, you always want more. And when you taste of his goodness and drink deep, nothing else can ever satisfied like before. That's the difference God's righteousness makes in our lives. And this filling up is not a one-time thing either, since you can be continuously filled. It is because Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving and makes us want more and more of him. This has been Monday Morning Motivation. Please join me again next Monday at 6 o'clock in the morning for another devotional. Have a wonderful week and may God bless you abundantly as you hunger and thirst for more of his righteousness.